Hey everybody, it's really dark in this garage, but I'm here with my friend all the way from Italy. Ciao ragazzi, sono a scuola perché tra poco ci sarà l'intervista con l'attore che ha interpretato Ryuk uh, in Death Note. Uh, il nome dell'attore è Jason Lyles. Vi lascio qua il suo nome e il suo Instagram se lo volete seguire. E lui praticamente ha fatto la parte del corpo di Ryuk, quindi il motion capture per quanto riguarda i movimenti della parte del corpo, perché il viso eh, l'ha fatto Will and Defoe. Ne parleremo nel dettaglio più tardi, sono sicura che gli chiederanno un sacco di cose, quindi mi avvio a scuola e ci vediamo tra poco. would be like in there just like blinding me from that and I could I, I don't think I couldn't see through the mouth maybe maybe I could look down and see the floor to get a reference so that I could so I, I wouldn't fall over the entire it was a cowl this entire down here around the shoulders and up it was all one piece that was then stitched it looked like it was stitched into his clothing so once we got that on at the beginning of the day that was coming off at lunch and that was it and then going back on see in the movies are running around blind trying to act and yeah. uh, and also they yeah. can't breathe and, and yeah. actually a lot of times monster suits are just really limiting in your in what you can move around in extremely. so you're fighting that as well extremely i mean that is all skin tight leather that is not like a very easy to move in thing. And, and one scene they're like, what if Ryu kind of put his hand up there, but with the leather, I was like, yeah, what if I did what I did? That'd be awesome. But like, that's, I even tried to do like a Pan's Labyrinth type thing because his hands were very for a fun picture. That was and, Jones, by the way. And all I could do was like right here. And so that's as close as the leather got. Like it was very restricting and. Uh, was it heavy? Yeah, I don't know. We never weighed it. I think everything, the quills weighed a lot. Um, they were they were all like extremely hard resin. You know, when you're on set with, with points, you're going points, points. And so as I would walk on to off of set, quills, watch the quills, quills, everyone watch the quills. And I had to have very good spatial awareness going sideways between things and not knocking. So no one got hurt, which was amazing. Every day we're like, somebody's going to get just like right in the eye. How did it take to get you in the suit? What was the dress time? I think it... It started around somewhere between an hour, an hour and a half, mm -hmm. which is not bad for, no, for a creature no, suit at all. It's not, not bad. bad. We got it down to, we would put the cowl on, well, I would put on like those pants. Man, those pants were awesome. We put on those pants, and uh, there were some tight pants. Did you get to keep them? <laughs> no, I wanted to keep all kinds of stuff, and they would not let me. I did steal one of Ryuk's hairs, though. Um, so I have one little purple hair out of it. But uh, it fell out. A lot of them fell out, actually. They were like, ah, oh, geez, and little little bits were, little little metal studs were falling out of his hands, and Emma Potter, the costume designer, was like, Jason, I was like, I didn't know this just happened. Um, How do you prepare to become someone else? Because it's not human. Well, there was, there was a lot of source material. So I, I watched the anime all the way through, of course, um, and, I, and I read the manga. But, and, and so the anime, it has that, that posture that he has, which, and so I tried to justify, well, why does he slouch like that? Well, usually because he's hanging from his wings, which are his shoulder blades, so he's just like that all the time. And, and then when I got to Vancouver, uh, where we filmed, I talked with Adam Wingard, and, uh, and we talked about Ryuk and, and what he, how he saw him for this and, and essences of what he wanted to bring in. And one thing was classic vampires. He wanted, he wanted me to look at all the Draculas, uh, Francis Ford Coppola's Brad Stoker's Dracula with Gary Oldman and um, Werner Herzog's Nosferatu. He's got the, you know, just how he moves his fingers and everything and, and how, how he holds himself. And David Bowie was, was a big inspiration for Adam, for Ryuk. He was actually his first choice, which came out in some interviews the last few weeks. Um, and then, of course, he passed away. And then his second choice was Prince. And then he passed away. Wow. And kind of uh, a cursed person. So, yeah, he joked. He's like, I'm going to stop doing music. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm going to stop doing musicians. <laughs> I got up there mid to late June. I think, like, I think like June 17th. They started taking life cast for the suit. 
and we're shooting in like two, like a week and a half. Wow. And so yeah, so you got to get the fittings, and you got to do the molds, and you got to sculpt or sculpt, and then mold, and then paint, and it takes like like a month if you rush it. Anytime I went to set, I was just wearing all black, like uh, just for reference. Um, luckily, we were filming scenes where that Ryuk wasn't in. But after about a month. And this is when they still had the face on, and we were getting pretty close to finishing the uh, the costume. I was going in like every other day for two to four hours for this stuff, um, as they were just doing amazing work on all the stitch. It was incredible to watch that process. And so Adam's there, and the producers are there, and the makeup team's there, and the costume department's there. And, I'm, and I've been working on this for like a month. I'm just in my apartment watching movies, you know, making voice memos of lights, dialogue, and, and playing around in my apartment, putting on different music, and trying to find. You can, I, got, I think I got it, and and so it, Adam's like, yeah. So show me, show me what, what we've been working on. And I start doing some stuff and this and that. I think he's kind of like this and like that, and and um, like, yeah. This is, and he's like, yeah, like nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I was like, oh geez, and I was already hot. And then I started, to, oh geez, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have this role. Crap. Um, <laughs> now the costume is made, no, yeah. it's going to be very expensive to replace yeah, you. I thought about this, you can't replace me, it's expensive, yeah. if you don't have time. Um, but we started playing around with some stuff, and, and I was like, what about that, what about this? And so we started playing with just, like, if he's just sitting there, and he just kind of, he's like, that! He's like, what? He's like, just that, kind of, you're like, eh, whatever, and eh, and all this stuff. And I was like, okay. And he's like, what if you try, like, like you were walking down a runway or something as a model? Okay, so we tried that, and like, <laughs> there's a little, like, maybe I went to 100%. He's like, take it to 10% to find a place. <laughs> and so we found it. And so he started being like, oh my gosh, I'm like, oh, I love that. And so, okay, good. And, and we found it. And it was a great lesson because I learned throughout Death Note, you cannot, this was the first big movie I was ever on. You can only prepare so much before you get there on the day, which was, it was a great lesson. There were some days he called me in. Uh, where I just got a call, it was my day off, and they're like, Jason, are you at it? Yeah, I'm at home. He's like, okay, well, we might be coming to pick you up, um, mm -hmm. and, and Adam wants to add you to a scene. Okay, what scene? I, I don't know, um, <laughs> but, uh, but he wants to add you to a scene, so I'll give you a call back. They called one time at like 9 o'clock, and I was about to start drinking, so it's really good <laughs> that they called in, because I was about to have a couple drinks and be like, oh, and this was overnight, and they called me back, they're like, yep, we're going to pick you up at 1.15 a.m. I was like, okay, we a couple hours of sleep, we'll see you then. <laughs> and then we get there, and it's like 4 a.m. by the time I have everything on, and it's this, and, I, and they got there, and the head was gone, and they uh -huh. couldn't find the head, because I was supposed to be working that night, so they took it back to the shop to make some... And so then someone had to speed over to the shop. Oh, it's here. Okay. And then they brought it back. And, and again, I still don't know what I'm doing. It was a scene in the cafe with Light and L. And I, when I'm standing outside the window, he's like, I want you there for this shot. And, and, but, uh, and then another one he added me to was um, when after he kills Anthony Scomold with the, uh, that. And his dad comes in and says, I love you. And he walks out. And then Ryu comes out. And he's like, ah. And, or there were a lot of times where Adam was like, try that. Try that, and then he'd go off, and I, I'd do it. He'd be like, "Forget it, just do what you were doing. Never mind, <laughs> never mind." You can only prepare so much at home. You don't know what's going to happen when you're on set. Oh, the blocking's over here. Okay, and then and then and you know maybe light slaps me in the scene or something, and it's like after react, I didn't know that was going to happen. I can't just be like, "Ah, oh, you didn't slap me. I have this whole thing prepared for this scene." And <laughs> so that was that was a huge thing I learned on Death Note. Like we're just going to find it on the day. You mentioned that you did auditions. Mm. Are they like regular auditions <laughs> actors do, <laughs> or it, what is different? Did, did you have lines? I did. Or, okay. I did. The audition, I was actually called into a shop uh, for it before the audition. I didn't even know what it was. They're like, "Hey, what are you doing in the next like four months?" And they said, oh, "Yeah, coming on Monday." And there's, there's this Ryuk and this thing that's called Death Note. Is that two words, one word? Okay, Death Note. What's it? Who's the director? Okay. They sent me two scenes. They sent me the one. Um, it was a different version, but it was when Light meets Ryuk, and they sent me. This scene, it, it, it's basically that cafe scene, is, and, and in this version, L left, and when he left, Ryuk ends up appearing in that scene and just laughing and being like, oh my gosh, I love that guy. Ryuk's just kind of like there <laughs> all the time. He's just like, he's just in the background and, <laughs> and all this, and I was like, I can do that. I'll just hit my mark, and I know I'm, I'm great. And then my agent sends me, he's like, oh, here's a note from for the audition tomorrow. This is a movement audition. We expect you, you know, it's going to be filmed with a wide uh, ca angle from the camera, and we want you to fill the entire space with continuous fluid motion <laughs> and uh, mention in the slate your mime and, and, and performance capture or anything. And I was like, continuous fluid motion? Who doesn't do that? And I look back at the, at the first scene, 
and it's like Ryuk melts and moves like liquid smoke from shadow to shadow and re-solidifies. I was like, you want, like, that's not possible. <laughs> that's like if I just went from that corner to that corner like Batman, oh well lit, like how, what are you talking about? <laughs> Crap, okay. I did this thing, like, like I did this thing kind of like if I'm solidify and then just like, <laughs> like that, like that's the best I can do. I haven't done that in a year, thank you very much. I've done that since the audition. I, I studied mime in New York. I put on my uh, black leotard and my dance shoes because when you're wearing that black on black in camera, everything just melts together. So it really looks like melting. It's like, okay, that's good. And then I found like, when I'm down, if when I'm down melted, like if anything comes up, it doesn't look good. I have to like stay connected to the ground like, as if I'm melted. And I just went over it like 40 times until I was like, okay, I got it. And I went in the audition, and it's for Lorraine Mayfield, who I, I've heard is a tough casting director. And she has done every day adventure film, House of Cards, and man, I'm ready. I meditated in the car, and I'm in my black <laughs> leotard in the audition room, and like waiting, like, and I'm just sitting there doing stretches, and I'm like, dude, I'm sorry, I'm gonna kill it. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, we're ready for you. And uh, it also helped me feel like more professional. Like, you know, I'm in my mind, leotard, and I've done some before, I'm ready to go. And uh, certain things sound better than they actually were in truth. Um, I was like, yeah, I have dance experience, and which is true, but I didn't like study it at Juilliard or something. I've danced in a musical. We are kind of like perfect for this. And I was like, what's well, wrong? She's like, okay, so let's do it. And so, yeah, just let's start down here. I was like, no, 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 let's start back on the first page. I'm gonna do that, and that's the light bulb pop. And then I'm gonna hit this mark. When I hit that mark, you give me that line. And then I'm gonna hit that mark, you give me that line, and I'm just gonna take the rest. She's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, that's, that's great. <laughs> she was so on board. And we did it. And the most you get in an audition is, great, thank you. And this is an award-winning office. And I felt great, I nailed it. And I was like, yeah, that's pretty much what I did last night as I prepared it for hours. And, and she pressed stop after the first take, and she says, that was amazing. No one has done any of that stuff you did. That was by far the best anyone's done all day. That was incredible. And I was like, thank you, thank you. Thank I'd say thank you like six times. Yes. <laughs> and she's like, we don't have to do that again. That was amazing. <laughs> okay, let's do, the second, uh, let's do the second scene. And then we did that, and that one was good. The first one was just... I, I felt way better about the but the second one I had a ton of fun with, and that just boosted my confidence. So I was like, oh man, I'm, I'm just gonna kill this. And she's like, that was amazing. Let me get closer and let's do it again. And verbatim, after the second scene, she said, Jason, you are so awesome. I really hope you get this role. <laughs> it's the best thing a casting director can say. Wait, don't you cast me? What are you talking about? <laughs> Which I learned, a casting director does not cast you. A casting director says, hi, director and producers. These are the best three people that you should look at. Yes. They said, don't wear the, the, the mime leotard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just wear shorts and a short sleeve shirt. Um, and the note was like, forget the movement, just just be ominous and use your size. And like, I tried to stomp through the floor in that audition. And when I walked into the casting office, I, I opened the door, you have to buzz, to, and then they buzz you up, and then you walk up some stairs. So they knew I was coming in, and I opened the door, click, Jason! <laughs> like from around, like, what? That's awesome. They're like, hey, let's, did you get the notes? Great, give me just a minute, let me finish this, and let's get you this role. It's like, yes, I am on board with that. Let's do that right now. <laughs> Because you got Ryuk. Because I got what? Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you got oh, You're the yeah, director's first choice. Are you sure? <laughs> He's like, yes. Are you sure, though? Like, how sure? Are you? What did they say? He's like, okay. And I emailed him afterwards. John, I'm really sorry. Are you sure? Because like, it was a Friday, and I didn't want to be excited all weekend. But in, and when I lived in New York, I mean, I'm six foot nine, so I can see everyone as I walk around on the street. <laughs> and I would always look at who I'm passing because you pass people like Michael Fassbender and Daniel Day Lewis and Brian Cranston. And I noticed them, and no one else did. And I would stop and say, Are you Brian Cranston? I'm, I'm Jason. I don't even bother. I'm, I'm an actor. Do you have any advice? Mm -hmm. They would talk for like 20 minutes. I met Daniel Day Lewis on the street. I thought, I like felt like I met like a unicorn. It was like, <laughs> No one else sees! <laughs> Daniel, Daniel Plainview, right here. And, and I asked him for advice, and his advice was, anytime you go into a room, never go in there looking to get something from them. You are always in there to give them something. If they want a part of it, great. If not, great. Don't go in there being like, oh, what do you guys want? 
go in there with the confidence you have and say, I got something for you guys. Let me show you. Have a good day. But they love it when you do it. They love when you take control of the room. They are more terrified on the other side of the table than you are because if they, you don't get the role of cares. They don't find the right guy. They're screwed. <laughs> so they are terrified. Like, is this him? Is uh... And so, and it worked. It works. So, like, go when you have an audition, go in there and be like, Shh, don't say shut up. But be like, shut up, let me show you something. <laughs> and just have fun because they love it. And then you're going to show them something they haven't seen all day. You had to have a moment where you saw or did something and you said, hey, I want to be a monster in the movies. <laughs> what was that? Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, right. Um, when I, I got the, I was that nerd who got the extended edition DVDs and watched the behind the scenes over and over over again. I was obsessed. And Andy Serkis was just like, ah oh, man, such an inspiration with Gollum. That looks awesome. Yeah. I didn't know how hot and terrible it would be inside, <laughs> but it looks awesome. <laughs> and so that was something, but I never, that was when I was in high school and it was years, a few years after that before I was like, I'm going to do acting. I'm going to really try it actually. I just, I never thought I would do it. All I heard was you're too tall. You're too tall. Sorry, man. Uh, sorry. Like maybe stage or classical theater. Well, you, with your presence, but like film, you're just way too tall. Sorry, dude. Shut up. Leave me alone. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'd worked through a background agency in New York, and then Midnight Three came around, which had the seven-time Oscar winner Rick Baker as the head of the makeup department, who did American Werewolf. And that's where I found this thing of like, oh, this is like I'm perfect. For I could be taller. Like this is <laughs> <Yep>. amazing. <laughs> if you could play. Any monster, any creature of your choice, uh -huh. what would it be? 100% Chewbacca. He's taken, I tried to get in episode 7, I tried to get on the Han Solo film, I tried to get in episode 8, maybe episode 9, we'll see. You'd be what great would, Chewbacca. Oh, thank yeah. you so much. But he's in great hands. I'm, I'm, there's no envy there at all. So trust yourself, break the rules, work. Work so hard, you have to work. When you're not working, someone else is. And I learned that because Andy Serkis, when I was when I was researching before Rampage, everything about motion capture, performance capture, possible. I was looking for tips and tricks. If you want to be a motion capture actor, be an actor, because it's no different if you're doing performance capture, if you're doing if you're in makeup or anything. The actor's preparation is still the same. You're just wearing different wardrobe and makeup. So there's a part of our brains that can believe something that is not happening, and the way to do it is to shut off the brain. And the way to do that is meditation and being very present because it just, when you're alert right here, like, let's do it just for a few seconds. See what you can see. When you're fully alert listening, your brain stops. When you get super angry or super sad about something in life, you don't need minutes or a couple hours to prepare. It can happen in a second. What it is, is for me, it's being able to get to a meditative place where I just shut off my brain, I've done all the prep, I know all the lines, let's go. And I'm ready to go, I'm not thinking about anything, I'm not thinking, I'm the character, I'm the character, I'm the character, this is happening, this is happening. I'm just here watching you and I know what's going to happen and I know you're going to do that beat and then I'm going to do this thing. I don't know how you're going to do it, so I'm waiting. I don't know if you're going to do something else, I don't know if she's going to do something. So my question was, uh, what daily practices apart from meditation and uh, exercises? But every morning, take a five minute as cold as the water will go shower. And the reason I say that, when you take that cold shower, act like it's so warm and it feels so good. Act like a camera's on you and dude, the hot water's broken, but we need you to look like, oh my gosh, <laughs> don't let your don't let your body oh it's cold it feels cold but you learn i don't have to react i can actually trick and then and then the cold water actually starts to feel nice after a few seconds so, plus it's really healthy it's really good for your skin it's really good for blood circulation and for muscle recovery and all kinds of stuff and for waking you up and um, but it's a really good practice. I kind of I did it for health reasons, and I figured out it's a good acting exercise. But that's about it for time, guys. We've run out. But thank you, thank you again for yeah. No, thank, thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And do something crazy or not, you know? Like yeah. But Elika, what a beautiful name. <laughs> thank you. But we're here to tell you guys, like, if you haven't seen Death Note. You gotta see it. I, it's amazing. I think it was super cool. Super cool. Well, and who was the best character in the movie? Ryuk. Ryuk? Yeah. Wow, who was the sexiest character in the movie? This one. This one. <laughs>
Ryu, this one. Oh yeah, I'm in the movie. I forgot. Yeah. I'm Jason Lyles. I'm Ryu in Death Note. That's so amazing. And she saw the movie tonight. So guys, check it out. It's awesome. It's so much fun. And then go watch the anime because it's this totally different thing. It is. That's also awesome in its own way. Mm -hmm. So check it out. And then maybe we'll make more. Maybe we'll make another series or another movie, but you got to watch it first. And if you do, I'll love you so much. <laughs> I'll love you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> of course, you're so welcome. Sono tornata, è stata un'esperienza bellissima. È bello parlare con persone che ce l'hanno fatta, insomma, hanno iniziato a far parte di questo mondo. È quello a cui stiamo mirando tutti. Sapere la loro storia, sapere anche come vanno i casting. Mi spiace per l'inizio che era sovraesposto, però poi hanno cambiato le luci, quindi poi si è visto bene. Se ancora non avete visto Death Note, eh, lo trovate su Netflix. Se non lo volete vedere lo rispetto tranquillamente, sono una grandissima fan della serie. Ho cercato di guardare il film con occhi diversi, ho cercato di non associarlo all'anime e al manga perché comunque sono due cose diverse, ma capisco perfettamente le persone che affermano di non aver apprezzato il film, non c'è alcun problema. Però il lavoro che c'è dietro ogni film, anche il più brutto del mondo, è veramente tanto. E questo ragazzo per interpretare Ryuk ha lavorato tanto dietro il suo personaggio e almeno merita il nostro rispetto sinceramente Ryuk era la, la cosa che mi spaventava di più aspettavo il momento in cui lui sarebbe arrivato nel film quando l'ho visto la prima volta sono rimasta stupita della qualità del personaggio c'è da dire anche che Willem Dafoe è un, davvero un grande attore ha fatto le espressioni di Ryuk c'è stato davvero un grande lavoro dietro quindi ora vado a dormire perché è tardi e sono ancora in fase di tesi finirò il primo anno il 15 settembre tra sette giorni quindi uh, ah. grazie per aver visto questo vlog fino alla fine so che è stato lungo ma ci tenevo a condividere le risposte che ha dato questo ragazzo perché sono molto interessanti almeno per chi vuole intraprendere questa strada ha dato dei consigli molto interessanti quindi spero che vi sia piaciuto e al prossimo vlog ciao